So as Dale mentioned, our uh, title for this presentation is Expanding the Ecosystem and Technology for Advanced Composites. And a few years ago, composites may not have been a general lecture, it might have been a side lecture, but today composites have really uh, taken root in every industry, and every industry is taking advantage of them. So everyone knows that composites are used a lot in the aerospace industry, uh, a lot in the racing, motorsports industry, uh, but composites are used uh, today in the transportation industry. So the bottles of water that we all drink, the main cost to get them to the store and get them here is transportation. They go in trucks, and these trucks often wait out before they volume out, which means that uh, they're about 40% full of pallets of water. The rest is just wasted space in that trailer. So they're using composites to make that trailer lighter so that they can get another pallet of water uh, on the semi. Uh, wind turbine blades, wind energy blades, we heard a lot about that uh, yesterday in the general lecture. So composites are really uh, used extensively there. Uh, the sports industry, golf industry, uh, a lot of the manufacturers like to use composites to try to get better performance, so bad golfers can feel a little bit better about themselves. And even the dentist industry is now starting to use composites, not only for, oh, it's a little bit scary big, um, uh, using composites for uh, not only the resins, for fillings, but also for uh, dental bridges. So this is actually um, our fifth anniversary of our composites interface in Abacus CAE. Uh, five years ago at the Paris uh, Users Conference, we introduced a, a brand new preprocessor for composites, and we really started focusing on the usability of composites, not only the, the solver technology, but making it easy to develop, to uh, define the composite layups uh, in Abacus CAE. Since then, we've been continuing to work on the R&D technology, uh, really the underlying algorithms and capabilities for doing advanced composite simulation. On the slide here, you can see uh, VCCT for crack propagation. Uh, we have multiple failure criteria, like Puck's criteria and Hachin to do ballistic impact and low speed, uh, barely visible impact damage. And our latest technology is XFEM uh, for doing both crack propagation in metallic structures, but also in composite structures. And you can see here in this animation that each ply of that laminate has a crack growing through it, and XFEM will understand uh, the fiber angles, so the crack will grow along the fibers. We've also been doing a lot of uh, development in composites crush, or crashability of composites. Uh, this example is a sine wave beam that's used in uh, helicopters under the pilot seats. Uh, sometimes the passenger seats too, uh, to absorb the energy of an impact. And in this particular model, we're explicitly, we're using Abacus explicit and explicitly uh, capturing all the physics of this essentially disintegration of the composite. So we are looking at uh, element by element, ply by ply, the matrix failure, the fiber failure of the composite. We have cohesive uh, definitions between each of those plies so we can capture the delamination. Uh, we have general contact turned on, so all these bits and chunks that fly away will bounce off of each other. And once that delamination opens up between plies, they'll then have contact, and we can look at those secondary impacts. So a lot of technology, a lot of physics uh, going into this simulation. And I personally worked on this a little bit, so we're all going to watch it one more time just because you know, I put the effort in. Yeah, beautiful. Okay. Um, we also worked on the post-processing. I mean, it's great if you could build models, it's great if you can get answers, but you need to understand those answers as well. So in Abacus Viewer, we have uh, some pretty unique capabilities for post-processing composites, where you can look at the stresses at a ply-by-ply -ply level. Uh, you can name your different plies. So when you look at the, the stress in a particular ply, you can look at it in a material centric. So it doesn't matter if that ply is uh, changing actual layers, you'll get a very centric uh, view of it. You can also look at envelope calculations and do contour plots, so you're not actually looking at the stress, but you can see which ply is carrying that peak load or that peak stress. Again, unique capabilities in Abacus Viewer for that. 
We also introduced iSight for composites design optimization and really to enable customers to develop reliable and robust composite designs. Um, so there's been a lot of iSight papers this week, uh, so hopefully you're able to sit in one or more of those and you really understand the technology. Uh, in this particular example, we're looking at uh, aircraft winglet and trying to optimize the design for that. And again, the unique capability of iSight is you look at variations. So as a designer, as an analyst, we may say that we want you know, that ply to be at 45 degrees. But when you actually go to build it, uh, the layup may be at 44 degrees ply angle or 47 degrees ply angle. And we need to understand what effect that's going to have on the performance. So in this case, um, we have kind of the deterministic optimized design for a three-ply design and a four-ply design. And you can see that by the uh, kind of purplish, violetish, pinkish uh, dot on the screen there. Um, and that's our deterministic uh, optimization. And you can see if we just did a deterministic optimization, uh, we would have chosen the three-ply design because it's lighter, it's cheaper to build, and it seemingly passes um, our P criteria. But when we add in these variations, we can see that that design actually has a 13% probability of failure, and that's not a very uh, reliable design. So the four-ply design is the best design in this case. So Abacus has a very large breadth of capabilities. Uh, we talked through a couple, I gave a couple of examples, but multiple failure criteria like pucks, Hashines, uh, multiple capabilities for doing static analysis, dynamic analysis, impact, low speed uh, analysis. So really quite a, an extensive list of native capabilities. And it's a little bit chaotic to look at it in this view, but we can kind of organize these into generally you know, composites, fracture and failure, uh, composite design, composites crush, optimization. And we can extend this view uh, when we include our partner applications. Uh, we have many partners here this week, and a lot of these partners have extended and wrote uh, capabilities that can enhance uh, the composite simulations that, that you all do. So I'm just going to talk about a few of them today. Uh, and again, they're here so you can get more details uh, after the meeting. So Firehole Technologies uh, develops a Helios MCT, and it really aids in looking at the damage of composites, and not at a lamina level, but actually breaks it down into a matrix and a fiber component, so you can look at the damage at those kind of sub-components. Uh, Safe Technologies, uh, very well known for uh, fatigue predictions. They have a new uh, product called EffiSafe Composites, which is essentially composite uh, fatigue analysis. Um, eXtreme is here as well. They have uh, multiple products. Uh, the one I'm showing here is one that allows you to uh, develop very detailed models of your composite, uh, explicitly modeling the matrix components, the fiber components, uh, so you can again see exactly what's carrying the load in your material. And we have another partner, Ingenuity, which uh, develops another capability for composites crush. This is, example is a front rail of an automotive vehicle. Um, and you can see the simulation of Abacus with uh, C-Zone compared to the experimental results. And extremely good correlation. Uh, the C-Zone technology doesn't explicitly model all of the physics, but captures the crush uh, characteristic of that composite layup and allows you to do more full vehicle crash and crush simulations. And we also have our add-on products, our plugins. So we have uh, plugins that we've developed um, and are kind of available uh, to you. So this one that I'm showing is wound composite model that really focuses on developing a very detailed finite element model for filament wound tanks. So that's just a very quick overview um, and a look into you know, what we've been doing as a brand for developing composites capabilities and composite simulation. But from a Dassault perspective, uh, composites is much more than just simulation. And I'm not going to hand it over to uh, John to talk about the broader view of composites at Dassault. John? Great. Thank you, Kyle. Good afternoon, everyone. Um, well, Samulia has been doing fantastic work in, in composites for many years, in fact, especially over the last five years. And the story of our little group is really goes back 20 years uh, to the early 1990s. And at that stage, we were involved in the development of blocker doors for the 747 program. And uh, they were made of resin transfer molding using preforms, complex geometry. And 
that's the moment we all looked up and said, we have to bring design, analysis, and manufacture together for composites. Because in those days, it was almost pre-CAD, I guess, but the designers would define a ply on the CAD system, and they'd have a rosette, and they'd say, material angle plus, you know, 45 degrees plus or minus three degrees. And we went, when we went down to the manufacturing floor and formed these preforms, we were lucky if the material was even there in the first place. It was normally cut or whatever. And so that really started us thinking, and we started developing some software we thought would take us six weeks, and 20 years later, we we on this road. And I guess what we did, uh, starting in 1991, is to take a finite element model because we had a background in analysis and we defined a ply model uh, you know which reflected manufacturing reality and then we added a draping simulation which allowed us to reflect manufacturing reality even lo f even further and um, I guess that was you know pretty obvious stuff really and during the 90s we, we licensed this technology and we found that the Formula One world uh, which was pretty big business actually uh, we were really early adopters, and by the end, after 10 years, the Formula One world pretty much universally used our technology. And the helicopter world, for example, was using the technology as well. Um, and finally, after 13 years or whatever, the concept of a global ply description in a finite element model became mainstream, when the large aerospace companies put in the concept of a global ply. But I guess things were still pretty quiet until 2006 or so, when suddenly Abacus put a huge amount of effort in to you know, upgrade their material description within Abacus to use star distribution and all that sort of thing, and to put again into the mainstream this concept of a, a global ply in an efficient way. And at the same time, um, our simulation was put into Katia V5, and as a result of that, our company uh, formed a partnership with Katia and so we were ended up in a situation five years ago where our technology was both in design and analysis at the same time. So those were really the, the, the things that we've been working for for many years on. And since then, our company doubled in size every two years. And um, we were finally acquired by DS. And the exciting thing about this is we're at the beginning of a huge new leap in our technology. So this is the Katia V6 platform swirl, if you like. And finally, here in one platform, we got these, the ability to bring together design, analysis, and manufacture, and experience in, in a way which you know, we're very excited about and which is you know, really unprecedented. So what this means is, at the design stage, we can bring our simulations to bear at the fingertips of the designer. We can transfer that model to, to the analyst very easily. We can produce the same structure which the designer and analyst have been working on, and we can experience that and, and track that model through its lifetime in an efficient way. So, you know, there's a huge, there's still a task ahead of us. The platform is there, but obviously there's a bit of work to get where we want to be. And so what are the things we're thinking about as we're developing this new software to support this flexible environment for composites development? Firstly, integration, I guess, as I've said, we want to combine all the aspects of the composites development process. Secondly, simulation. So we're not just talking about structural analysis. That's a hugely important area. We want to simulate every aspect of the, the production process, even of the manufacturing process, throughout the whole cycle. Thirdly, live response. You know, we're all very used to software where we put in input conditions, press a button, and wait go and have a cup of tea, and then look at the results. And, and obviously, the bigger our simulations are, the more necessary that is. But there are various classes of simulations which don't take long. And in those cases, we want to make the user experience very rich and very rewarding to be able to get them to understand the process more easily. Finally, scalability. You know, that's really important. So the V6 platform, obviously, is going to be scalable to the highest level, to the professional level, but also across platforms. So we can imagine you know, doing complex designs or whatever on a, on a high performance workstation, but then transmitting that composites model to a mobile device on the shop floor. So the guy who's manufacturing that model can actually work out what he's meant to do very efficiently. 
So let's take a step back and work out what the composites engineer does in developing composite structures. So there are basically four main processes. Obviously, geometry definition, and that's really predicated by aero, you know, aerodynamic considerations or packaging or whatever. And then the first stage of the composites process, if you like, is chopping that structure up into regions and really sizing that structure and seeing roughly how thick it should be to manage the, the, the loads on it and all, all the other requirements. Um, and that's what we call the zone or the, the grid model, where it's a relatively simple model, not taking manufacturing into account at all. And this is a very analysis-focused process. So obviously, geometry is a design-focused process. Uh, zone model is an analysis-focused process. But now we go back to a design-focused process, trying to work out exactly how we're going to make the structure. So for example, we will define a very detailed ply model. And a typical wing skin or side, an, side of an aircraft or a skin of a wind turbine blade, you'll be talking hundreds, perhaps even thousands of pliers. I've got models with thousands of pliers on, on a fuselage, for example. So it's a huge investment in, in manpower and so on. But we've got a very, very clearly defined model that we can be comfortable can be manufactured at that stage. So it's a very long process, and there's a lot of interaction between all the disciplines in fulfilling this process. So just with our, our Simulate technology, to, together with DS products, this is where we are today, which is, you know, I, I'm pretty amazed at, really. So we start off with, this is an example of a gas turbine blade. So within Katia, we can obviously generate the, the geometry of the gas turbine blade based on aerodynamic considerations and other considerations. And then within Katia Composites Design, we can use automated tools like solid slicing to automatically generate the ply shapes needed to fill that solid. And then we can shuffle the plies within Katia. And now, of course, th this already is a pretty detailed model. And now we want to do some decent structural analysis on these components. So obviously, within Katia, we can modify the split the surface and then move it over to Abacus CAE we can mesh an Abacus CAE. And then we'll use our Composites Link uh, product to transfer that whole ply model seamlessly, you know, hundreds of plies uh, in a couple of minutes to Abacus CAE. In Abacus CAE, we can then extrude that model to target nodes which have been defined on the surface. And we end up with a very, very highly detailed solid model for subsequent analysis in Abacus. And I mean, this process, the, the end result there is a, is a model of un, unparalleled fidelity, uh, which has been done in perhaps a couple of days' work. And only three or four years ago, you would never have been able to do that. You could have spent a year getting a, a lot of rubbish, which couldn't have been used in practice. So we're really changing the game. And people who don't even use Katia as their main CAD system are using some uh, DASO system products because of uh, these capabilities. So it's, it's very interesting working both in the design world and the analysis world. As I say, I came from the analysis world, but you know, the design world's a very, very valid world because that's what we build the model from. So if you look at simulation requirements, you know, we typically in our composites model for Abacus CAE product, for example, we define plies on surfaces or finite elements. So it's a very quick process. And we're basically abstracting the model. And a good analysis model is, is maybe a simplification of the real world. In fact, the simpler it is while reflecting the physics, the better it is. And so, you know, in the Formula One world, people are defining these models very quickly, you know, a thousand ply models in, in a couple of days. Um, and that works very well for a, a simulation perspective. On the other hand, the design world is all about exactness. So we're exactly defining each ply using a surface and boundary curve. Uh, and in that world, we're looking for accuracy because we're going to use this model for the final production. So it's very precise, but relatively slow. And you know, Katia Composites Design is, is, a, is a good example of a software in that category. So we've got these two conflicting requirements. And our job now on the V6 platform is to bring these two worlds together. So why do we want to bring this together? I think. Uh, I, I work with many companies in, in many domains around the world, and this is just an example of a, a very good company, but with a very inefficient process. I won't name any names, of course. So they have spent, I don't know, 10, nine years, 
This is a wind, energy, a wind turbine blade manufacturer. So they, they've probably spent 10 man years coming up with a fantastically efficient way of defining a ply model for finite element analysis. And you know, it's very efficient and they can generate these models, you know, 60 meter blade models very quickly, incorporating maybe thousands of plies. So they really have got a very efficient process in terms of the structural analysis. But at that stage in the structural analysis, they haven't really looked at the detail. They haven't been able to do the producibility simulation and all those things. And the problem is once when they have their model, which has passed a few iterations in the analysis world, they then transfer thousands of ply boundaries to the design world. And each ply boundary has to be redrawn by a, you know, a designer. And so we're talking about a man years of work with every iteration. So effectively, we are, you know, we stuck. We, we, once the initial concept has been done, we can't really iterate any further. Uh, and also, we're probably dealing with five different data models as they go through that process. So in fact, although they put a huge amount of work into one aspect, you know, it, it's, it, it's still expensive and it doesn't really work. So what we really want to do at the end of the day is to have one key, one fundamental model based on geometry for the whole structure. So this is really the, the, the concept of bringing all these worlds together on the V6 platform. And, and just as, as an aside, I mean, this doesn't mean that we can't use Abacus CAE, for example, to tie in and do a specialized analysis on that V6 data structure. Uh, but, but in, you know, the V6 model is the master model the Abacus CAE model is the slave model for sure. So what we're trying to do is to bring this whole process and improve its performance. And there's been a number of capabilities added to Katia to automatically generate thousands of plies in an automated way. So we can bring the performance of a, a, you know, the creation of an exact model to the performance that we would expect of a, of a non-exact model. So this really is the requirement for the perfect Composite development tool. So we want the precision of the current design approach. So we want to be a, a master model must be based on geometry, and uh, you know a curves not mesh. But we really want the speed of the current analysis approach, because we want to be able to iterate. We want to be able to change things very quickly. So that means re-engineering the user experience and the underlying technology of the design world. To, to get the performance up, basically. And that means automating plier modeling as much as possible. And then finally, uh, another aspect, which I haven't talked about yet, really, is these on-demand simulations. You know, there's been some huge amounts of fantastic research projects in, in the past. But the only way to get that research used is to put it in front of the development engineers. Otherwise, they, will, they just don't have time to go and read a paper and do some calculations. So the whole concept is to bring simulation to the fingertips of the engineer. So just some things that have been happening in the last couple of years on Katia Composites design, you know, to speed up ply creation on you know, wind turbine blades, for example. What we can now do is we can define key geometry reference lines, and then on a spreadsheet, we just define the ply definitions based on those reference geometries. So we don't have to you know, we don't have to define the ply boundary for every single one of 2,000, 3,000 plies. We can just do this uh, automatically based on reference geometry. Uh, for wing skins or something like that, we have a different approach, a zone or grid approach, where we can define regions of a wing skin, for example, uh, optimize on the smeared thickness of the composite on each of the grids, uh, grid cells. And then automatically within Katia Composites Design, you can generate the ply boundaries, uh, which again are precise. But because that's automated, it's very efficient. And I've already mentioned the solid slicing approach, which is used for things like gas turbine blades. And hey, you know, every composites application is different. So you know, we will be adding to this repertoire as new uh, applications of composites come up. So just. Moving beyond design analysis man manufacture, we're involved in a European Union project called Symposium. And this is bringing non-destructive testing into the composites world. So basically, I guess you're probably all familiar with non-destructive testing. You take a composite structure, put it into a bath of water, and do an ultrasonic scan. 
And what you can do is you can determine if there are voids or delaminations within the structure. But right now, the person operating the NDT equipment has no idea whatsoever what's inside that, that component. So the first part of our, our project here is to take the composites layup definition and transfer it in an efficient way to the NDT operator so they know where to actually measure for these deficiencies. And on the other hand, when they have measured these deficiencies, we then have to transfer it back to the analysis world, the simulation world, and uh, calculate knockdown factors and so on. So having this global framework of the V6 platform centered around a database allows us to be very efficient uh, as we develop this architecture for interaction in the fullest sense. So hopefully I've made the, the case for integration being really important. And the other aspect that we've been really doing for many years is this uh, manufacturing simulation. And, and I guess it's not easy because composites are complex, structure, uh, com are complex materials. Their application varies hugely. So if we say we want to simulate all manufacturing processes, it's a long list. Hand layer probably is still dominant in the high performance composites world. But we have automated tape laying, automated fiber, fiber placement, for example. And then increasingly new manufacturing methods like forming, braiding, and filament winding. I mean, filament winding has been around for a while, but application to high volume. So for example, we're working with automotive companies who are, you know, in the next year or two, I mean, the time frame is amazing, are, are going to be producing carbon fiber cars, graphite fiber cars, at the volume of 50,000 a year. It's, it's unheard of. So the only way you know, we can ha make these, the, the process of developing these structures more efficient is by simulating these technologies, the, these manufacturing methods. And the other point I'd like to make is historically, you know, when we started 20 years ago in the analysis world, we didn't even allow a person to define a ply unless it was, it was manufacturable. Um, but you know, the state of the art at the moment is people can define pliers without doing the manufacturing simulation. So historically, the manufacturing has only been considered right at the end of the process, which is just too late to, to change things. So what we're doing as a, as a general concept is to try and make these simulations, bring them forward in the process right up front uh, so we can make changes, if necessary, as early as possible, when it's cheaper and more possible. So I, I, I guess, you know, as I've mentioned, we have had this you know, fiber simulation tool for a long time. And unfortunately, within Katia, going back six or seven years, there is an architecture which allows us to plug in fiber simulations. So it was a pretty far-sighted development by the Katia group there. Um, you know, they've always had simulation in mind in their, in their data model. And um, this allows CAA partners, the partnership program of, of Dassault System, to allow you know, partners to put in specific simulations, including us in the past. Now, this is currently defined just for ply representation, so for hand layup and so on. But we're currently in the process of extending this to you know, cater for other data models that are required for braiding and filament winding. So just a quick talk about um, hand layup, for example. Yeah, I mean, the, the basic theory of hand layup has been around for many years. There's a, seminal paper in 1956 on this topic. You know, and typically, people will use what's called a pin-jointed net approximation. In other words, we assume for a woven fabric that the yarns do not extend, and all the deformation in the fabric needed to cover a doubly curved surface will be pretty much pure shear. And you know, there are many simulations out there. Many universities have that, but we've had 20 years of tweaking our algorithm. And, and one of the main things is we actually follow the surface very closely. So going around a sharp corner, for example, we follow the surface, we understand the surface topology. And that makes the, uh, you know, the simulation much more stable. And the video on the bottom right there just shows a typical fairing where, you know, the quite challenging geometry. And what we're showing there is a simulation in Katia in the first instance where there's too much shear being developed in the fabric. And then the user is quickly putting in a, a dart to reduce the amount of shear. So you know the, these these solutions are pretty uh, well proven, give great results. You know we we have them in design and analysis world, so really they are the benchmark for any further development. And just on that topic here, um, 
hopefully this video will, I don't know if you can quite see this video, but the simulation which 20 years ago took a couple of minutes is now taking fractions of a second. And so what we're doing in this prototype here on the bottom right is we're actually allowing the user uh, to, to vary the start point. Now what you have to realize is there, if you're putting a flat bit of fabric onto a doubly curved surface, there are really infinite ways of putting that fabric on the surface. And so, you know, we are asking, if we're asking the designer to actually simulate their production, they're going to have to make a decision about where to put the start point, for example. So here, because our simulation's got to the speed it's got to, we can give them a feel, a very good feel, about the consequences of the input parameters, if you like, so that they can judge things well. And I, I think this is actually quite revolutionary because, you know, historically, the people who knew how to make things with the people on the shop floor, which weren't the designers. But with tools like this and live simulations, we're giving you know, designers, analysts, and manufacturers the, the ability to predict what's going to happen when they use a particular manufacturing technique. The other thing is with the performance that we, we're getting now with our solutions, you know, we can tie this into optimization methods, genetic algorithms, or so on, or maybe some eyesight technology. So if you have a you know, a, a, a typical component with 500 plies, you know, we want to be able to run optimizations on the manufacturing of those 500 plies, you know, in a couple of hours. And, you know, we have all the components in place. It's not release software yet, but that's certainly where we're going. So coming on to automated tape laying, for example, you know, this is obviously important for the large airframers who can afford the millions of dollars for their hardware. And you know, what we do at DS, we, we rely on our partners to provide these simulations using this uh, interface, which I, I mentioned earlier, because you know, we, do, we, we don't want to do everything. You know, we want to focus on what we're good at. We want to focus on the basic data flows and, and the structure. And we work with people who are very experienced. And just another point here, like I said earlier, in the swoop, automated tape laying in the past has been a manufacturing concern. But now we're working with all our partners to make their simulations available to the designers right at the beginning of the process. So ultimately, we can actually, the designer can even make judgments on which of the manufacturing methods might be more appropriate. So forming, as I say, is really becoming a big thing in, in the automotive world because the only way they're going to get 50,000 units a year is by forming and braiding and that sort of thing. And so, you know, the various levels of analysis, you know, we, you can start off, the best analysis is just a quick calculation in Excel, maybe, but in the fiber simulation world, these geometric algorithms are well established and they give a very good first pass. So all of our users in the automotive world will use our geometric algorithm just to make sure that the designer doesn't put a very bad bump in the surface, uh, which, you know, isn't a problem with metals, but is a huge problem with uh, composites. And we have further levels of simulation. Uh, we have a kind of inverse method, which maybe solves in, in less than a, a few seconds, a minute or so. But you know, in the future, there's huge potential for using the power of Abacus's technology and, and presenting it to the, to the designer even in a way which is efficient during the, pr the process. So braiding is another uh, production technique which is becoming very important basically because you, you, got low, uh, you could get high production volumes and low wastage. Let's say 10% wastage rather than 40% for hand layer. And so, you know, if you go out there, there's no real commercial solution for a braiding simulation and certainly not available within a mainstream you know, 3D experience platform. So what we've done in our group, because you know, we like fiber simulations, we've developed this braiding simulation and we're in the process of working out how we can tie this effectively into the abacus structural analysis. Because it's not trivial, because basically a braided component, your fiber architecture is changing continuously. You know, so your, your effective thickness is changing and all that sort of thing. So we still have some work to do, but we've been driven by our automotive users who use analysis on an everyday basis. And they are demanding that our composites infrastructure give them what they used to, uh, you know, which is continuous simulation all the time, um, you know, in an, in an efficient way. 
And finally, this filament winding, I won't talk too much about that because we, we're very much in, in the process. But again, what we want to do here with filament winding is not make filament winding a one-off task for a specialized company. We want to bring the simulation for filament winding into the V6 platform so anyone can do a filament winding simulation at the drop of a hat. And in that way, we can bring real productivity to the composite development process. So as you can see, we, we, you know, we, we on this journey, we can see the step change in V6. And we want to bring these disciplines together in the process and allow people to make good choices up, up front. Kyle, back to you. Thanks, John, for that. And it gives you a good sense of you know, where our brain is, what we're thinking for composites, and the integration between uh, the design world, the simulation world, and the test world. And the ultimate goal is to really do proper optimization of composites, which includes all of those aspects. But some of that was a little bit forward thinking that uh, not all of that is available today. But what is available today is our first uh, release of this composites integration between uh, CATIA design, composites design in V6 and Simulia Excite. So I wanted to show uh, you a little bit of this because um, it is released and it is uh, available today. So in Excite, which uh, we had a good demo of yesterday, you can now define your laminate section properties by just referring back to your uh, CATIA composites design, either just taking all the plies or selecting a ply or using the zone model that you have defined there. So let me play a little bit of video of how this works. So we're in Excite. We have our model there. We're going to define our laminar material properties. We're then going to define our composite section properties. And when you say all plies, and OK, let me try that again. It goes pretty fast. OK, so we're in Excite. We have our model. We define our laminate material properties. And then we want to import our uh, composite layer properties, which use all plies, and then it's done. So it happens very quick. It's faster than I can even say it. So what was that before? We had a very capable solution before in V5 and Abigus CAE. So for those of you that haven't seen that, this is uh, CATIA V5 where we have multiple plies defined. Uh, we can then use composite link to export all of those ply definitions, the fiber angle definitions. We're going to export it to uh, a file. It's an external file that just stands on, the, uh, you know, on your hard drive. So we're going to name that file and then export that material. Once we've done that, we can move over into the Abacus CAE environment. Uh, we have our geometry there. We're now going to create a new layup definition. And once we've defined that, we can import uh, the actual layup parameters that we have exported from CATIA v5. So we're just selecting that file now and applying those properties and layups to our Abacus CAE model. So again, fully capable, fully functional, but I can describe that in, uh, you know, fully and not have to rush through it. So I was very jealous of uh, all of the performance graphs. And I know engineers love graphs. So that was in pictures. And here it is in graph. So composites, pre-processing, high-performance computing. It's not about MIC or GPUs. Um, but what we have now is previously it took a minute at, at the fastest to do that mapping between the CATIA V5 model composite layups and Abacus CAE. And it literally takes, you know, for this model that I had shown, uh, like 5.8 seconds or 5.7 seconds. So it's nearly a six time improvement uh, in those definitions of that defining. So with that, I'm going to wrap up. And hopefully, you got some sense of just how much we're thinking about composites broader than just simulation, really design, simulation, and manufacturing. And hopefully you also have some appreciation of why that's really necessary to have all those tasks fully integrated to do proper composites design, to do proper composites optimization. You're going to see a lot more technology being released over the next several years. Uh, but the first uh, release of the integration is available today in Excite uh, R2013. So thank you.